On the next episode of My Adventures with Superman. Ah! Oh. My Adventures with Superman, next Saturday at midnight. Watch out! Ah! On Adult Swim. On the next all-new episode of Dr. Stone. We're being watched. Who are you? That was strange. I thought I saw a flash of light by the boat. Ah! Hey, what's the matter, Soyuz? Stone next Saturday at 12:30 only tsunami on adult swim Following program may contain coarse language, suggestive dialogue, and discussion of violent imagery and sexual situations. It is intended for mature listeners who can tell the difference between facts and opinions. It's the Toonami Faithful Roast of Food Wars, the fifth plate on this episode of the Toonami Faithful Podcast. I am your host, Sketch, and with me I have... Yes, I'm Ryder Real Mix. And... Your wonderful data monkey, Colt Burr. And... A starving cat for good quality Food Wars content, Kuro Kitty. <laughs> yeah, you didn't eat good this season. <laughs> you <laughs> ate very bad. <laughs> it was. It left me hungry for more. That's what I can say about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Somebody keep a pun counter. Uh, I don't know. It, it it left me hungry for less. Oh, I see like this shit. I, to the kitchen. Maybe this should have ended at the uh, previous season. She really should have. Oh boy. So yes, yeah, tsunami just wrapped up airing the final season of Food Wars, and I gotta say. Back in 2019, when they finally announced that they were going to play Food Wars, you know, I had the inkling that they would actually finish it. But at the same time, before they announced Food Wars, the idea that they would A, play Food Wars and B, play all of Food Wars. I didn't see it happening, really, (laughs) even though I'm happy uh, they did. I think we're all happy that they did. We're just not sure we're happy they actually played the last season. (laughs) Oh, I am. <laughs> I just don't understand. Did did they did the pro- producers just like give up, or was the storyline originally written this poorly? I I no, think not I, I think what I saw on Twitter from like one person, he I think if I remember it correctly, it was the resource helper slash like actual chef that the author used mm-hmm. or the manga used for seasons one through four or that section of the book like was went got pregnant and went on a maternity leave and he just decided to make season five like that without her or something like that yeah it with without the very vital help of an actual chef that has good ideas for recipes and good explanations for recipes and all of that he kind of fell back on um, just homaging the bad chef people from cooking Master Boy, <laughs> I guess. I guess that's what Noir is basically uh, based on. <laughs> like, bro, I Wait, love you. I, I mean, <laughs> go on, go on, Darrell. I mean, I, I love Food Wars, but at this point, I was like, dude, you should have just stuck the hint on this one. <laughs> because we got fucked. Uh, oh, that's for the pun count. Sketch, <laughs> you gotta say it the, way, the cringy way they say it in the season. Noir, noir, holy noir. crap! Noir, noir. Every time they said noir, cuisine like, no, de noir. noir. That's not how you say it. It's noir, noir. Noir. 
these are people who are supposed to be trained in French cuisine. They can fucking say the word right. They can say the fucking word right. <laughs> They should right. say the word wrong, but the voice I just may not be able to. There's no you there. There's no fucking you in that word. It's not a two syllable word. What are we doing here, people? What are we doing? <laughs> Brian Earl Best with ADR? I guess. Uh, there. All right. So we're at the fifth season of Food Wars. So I guess it's fair that not all the voices are going to be fantastic. I mean, they're, they're, they're running out. But. I don't know. I think for the most part, the performances were fine. I know um, some people were like, oh, Lanterpy's voice is terrible, but I I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of like it. I thought the voices were fine. It was mostly just yeah. the lack of the explanations well, I... of the food concepts. Yes, absolutely. If you compare season yeah. one of Food Wars to this slop, you're like, oh my gosh, what happened to the Food Wars? <laughs> They, they like, if they happen, you get, like, no information about them at all. No preparation, no explanation, none of that. And some of them, they happen off screen entirely uh, or in a montage. Yeah. That pissed me off so much. It was just like, oh, come on. We skipped Takumi and Megumi's fights doing that sort of shit. Oh, oh here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The dog food thing and the baby food thing, fascinating concepts. I'd love yes. to yes. know how that would have worked. Obviously, the author wasn't sure either, because in the manga, they don't show it either. That's just... What? <laughs> lazy. It's it lazy is. writing. It, quite frankly, like, even if they didn't have... What what Colt's saying is correct, and they didn't have the one chef. Like, there are hundreds of top-notch chefs around the world that probably could have been paid to help consult. I mean, it was just, it just felt rushed and quite frankly, lazy. We didn't get to see any of the actual cooking. And then we had this really pathetic um, bad guy set up. Like noir just was not believable uh, as an intact <laughs> properly. The Austin was just like ridiculously creepy. Like you're going to marry me. Like if someone told me that I'd laugh in their face, like, haha, fuck off with that. Yeah. We can do a food war, but I'm not going to do shit with you. If I lose, <laughs> you're, you can go screw yourself. Like it was just, it was just so ridiculous. And what made them so bad? Like when I heard underground food battling or whatever, I thought, Oh, they're getting illegal ingredients. And like, they're using bad tactics. And I thought that's a really great concept to explore. Like be good food, proper food husbandry and like proper, uh, uh, sourcing of food, like they don't yeah, they could really that. talk. About that. They didn't even talk about any of that. So, what even makes them bad guys? Well, I don't know. They use. I always it's assume they, they use do pain, that. They use chainsaws and cooking, which I gotta say, yes, that is a travesty, and no way on fucking hell that's a fantasy that that can cut meat and not cause <laughs> a shredding disaster. Oh my god. <laughs> that's one of the ones I would I would be tempted to research on to see if that was an actual thing. Like I could That's say like, it used as a as 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 a as a beater, but not not as a mixer. Not not as oh my gosh. <laughs> not, not to season a cut of meat. <laughs> there is a there is a tool that you can <laughs> use and it's a it's a it's a like a chainsaw, but it's about it's about um seven inches long. So it's really small and it's electric and you turn it on and it can chop meat. So like there's a concept that exists like that in cooking. They didn't actually, they didn't do anything to explain any of these cooking whatsoever. No, like, no they didn't. None of these dishes are memorable. Like, I can remember the bear meat pepper sauce from whatever the fuck season it was. And I can remember the fried. Well, it's hard one to forget that, that reaction, was... unfortunately. Yeah, like, I can remember those dishes. But I can't remember maybe the one where he did the fantasy where it was like brushed with ma with egg mayonnaise but only remember that because i'm like this is a fucking fantasy dish this doesn't exist in real life <laughs> with this dish for evil. my cluster bomb cake that i exploded in an oven and it came out perfect <laughs> yeah. again i i give him props for the insanity but it would have been nice if the actual cooking concepts were further explored because it's like you know these are really cool concepts because you have 
chainsaw. Okay, how does this work? You have um, the syringe, which that was a very well, underutilized that, boss. No, no, no. Now, syringes um, injecting food, that is done when you do barbecue. And like, um, if you've ever right. seen barbecue pit masters, because I do the same techniques, I do use a syringe when I'm grinding, um, like when I'm actually injecting more seed mm-hmm. into my meat. And he's sucking out the so, blood and, and, and putting it in other things. You know, that's cooking yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, you know, any, uh, <laughs> which uh, further points are like yeah sure he looks creepy but he's not doing anything particularly weird <laughs> i always just found it funny because like noir was like basically just the idea of well who feeds all the criminals and it's just that's the basis of the whole organization it's kind of like yeah okay i mean neat kind of weird that you got to go with the whole uber stealthy you know criminal aspect but it's like okay they just feed criminals it's not like it's technically illegal <laughs> No, they, uh, you know, some of them are, you know, obtaining illegal ingredients or right. will break the law to cook, I guess. But, uh, yeah, these these guys are a joke. <laughs> this concept is a joke. It's entirely unnecessary. I, think the con- I don't think the concept itself was a joke. It was just, again, a rushed concept. It, 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 it was all rushed and poorly explained. I, I, I think I said it at, at the end of the last episode, like, or really, yeah, you could have done two seasons of the entire blue and put more information into it and just extended it all out and it would have been better. Yeah. yeah. Here's how I would have written if I could have rewritten this series, this, this season. Uh, no noir, first of all. Second of all, the main, the main focus should have been the, the issue that came up at the very last four episodes actually were the best episodes of the season. They talked about the downfall of having the God tongue and how it's a detriment because at some point the person who has it reaches a point where they eat anymore. Everything tastes horrible to them because they've only had excellent food. Blah, blah. Like, okay, that's an interesting, if not weird, but in, in universe, it makes sense concept. And that would have completely changed the dynamic because Erina's motivations would have been purely for how am I going to address this with my mother, A, and B, finding someone who can actually satisfy her and C, what does that mean for herself and her own ambitions, A, as a chef and B, as a person with the god tongue? Like these are complicated things that would have made a really nice plot that if they just focused on that instead of throwing it in in the last three episodes would have been for a fantastic season long uh, season long story arc because then it would have been like she wouldn't have been herself and then you know her and her friends for finding a dynamic with like inspiring her to cook again like actually seeing Aaron a cook which I only got to see the very last episode or last episode and a half I should say you know like that would have been interesting make it not so much about Soma mm-hmm. though what they did tell about Soma I, I did like, and again, this is where the only part of the season that was really, that I really liked, where they talk about him and his mom. And he mm-hmm. talks about what made him thrive is failure. And I thought, what a beautiful lesson. Excellent. Yes. That is the thing that we should be telling people because he's only succeeded through losing and then winning later. That's how it's been every single time throughout all four seasons. That's been his, his, his like, you know, story arc is he loses first and then he wins because he learned something from losing. And that's what he got from his mother. And any person who's ever cooked knows that they learn the best lessons from fucking up a recipe. God knows I've done it enough. Holy crap. You know, so like these are the things that would have made that that made the episodes that were good, good and would have made the season good if they'd really invested in that. That and actually showing us some recipes because, man, I'm hungry. I come to Food Wars for food. Show me the fucking food. <laughs> I, I like the uh, Yuletide log. That was a cool concept. That was a great concept. Seeing Soma come up with something that would uh, appease the appetite of somebody who can't have a lot of fat, can't have a lot of sugar, can't have any dairy. Like, how thoughtful, how thoughtful of him. <laughs> <laughs> just just wild. As well as like, oh, that's a neat concept. I'm just happy yeah, they, probably, they... I don't know, someone probably would have been fucked up if he was on running a restaurant from another world, though. Actually, he probably would have had fun with that, just to create but concepts. Don't you remember? Soma is the demon lord. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true. True. Okay, okay. <laughs> they uh they they had a 
a fair amount of references in this season with the food reactions. And one was, you know, the hero and the demon Lord dragon quest. We aren't evil bookmen, you know, we're not a bad slime, but they didn't. <laughs> they, when uh, Sarge had her reaction to Soma's cake, there's the, the crumble fairy. And in the manga, it goes onward to be a crumb blue fantasy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God damn you copyrights. That'd have been an amazing thing to see. It yeah, it was. It was. I mean, we got the JoJo joke back in the end of season two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Just just go for the joke reference and just leave it be. The one thing that I have to say. Sorry, I cut off. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to interrupt. I my sound keeps coming and going, and it's my ability to hear you all talk. My apologies. <laughs> huh. Go ahead. Uh, what were you saying? Uh, one thing. So the the fusion recipe, which is a fun concept, and we've seen like hints of that in other recipes. Mm-hmm. It, the one that Asahi used, he included shark fin. And, like I inwardly cringed so hard at that because first of all, uh, shark fin is a very controversial dish because to get it, after you, you it, it is see that's is why he's one of the bad boys of cooking it's illegal in most countries because it's actually very very cool the way they get the shark fin and it's something that is considered a so-called salty. but so so gordon ramsay a name that everybody knows did some research on this and he discovered like he he went and tried it and he said there's nothing special about it. the broth that they used to make the soup was spectacular but he watched them make the and like it, he said, this could be fine on its own with any other protein, but the shirt itself is considered a delicate because it is so risky to get. And I find it so problematic that they threw that in there, didn't have any dialogue about it. They just ate it like, oh, this is so this because quite frankly, like they I mean, I feel like Crunchyroll has a responsibility to educate its viewers about stuff like this, or even the manga, they have a responsibility to educate its viewers. This inherently involves a really horrible cruelty to animal. Like they, they will catch the shark, cut off its fin and throw it back in the water. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring the conversation down, but that really bothered me a lot. They just threw it in there and then they didn't even talk about it. And I'm oh. like, what the fuck, guys, what the actual, <laughs> this, this is not okay. I'm not okay. This- I'm, I'm going to have to say that there was probably just ignorance on the manga cuss part, and that's I was not gonna, okay, but... I, I was going to say, because this is like so many other things that have been happening. I, I'll just throw out Ronnie Kenshin and leave it at that. Hell, look here, don't ever mention don't, that again. Don't, no, don't, no. Don't you ever mention that again. Don't you ever, ever, All right. ever mention that again. I will I'm sorry, but we might mention that again later. But, hey. <laughs> not, hey. not in regards to this. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm... Yeah, I mean, uh, incidentally, that does kind of make Asahi as bad as he says he is, <laughs> even though it doesn't. Also, yeah, this uh, no, this not everybody gets that context from that because no. they they didn't explain it, so you don't get that valuable background about oh he threw in shark fin, but where the fuck did he get the shark fin? You know. Not legally. illegally. He didn't get it legally. <laughs> he's got he's got a whole network, you know. Yeah. Uh yeah. Ugh. Just that's uh, uh, apologies. Uh, Asahi felt so strong. I had to say it. <laughs> Asahi's kind of an interesting antagonist for Soma. You know, the whole uh other son aspect with Jorichiro. And, you know, how they both want to surpass him and all of that. And they have oddly similar motives in some respects. But, yeah, they uh, they did not execute that well. <laughs> He's a rip-off Mima Saka, and I'm glad they acknowledged him as such. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they totally did. <laughs> That's what I was happy about, because like, he's just basically an overpowered Mimasaka. He's basically just Mimasaka times 100, right? Thank you yeah. for acknowledging this, and I appreciate it. Here's the thing, though. Mimasaka actually has to study extensively. Yes. This guy, oh, I'm holding their cooking utensil. I now have whatever crazy ability they supposedly have. 
okay. Okay, um, Mega Man. Well, yeah, Wait, for right? the concept of what Food Wars was going for, I, I'm totally fine with that level of bullshit. This is, it was this like, is just food men. <laughs> right? He's it, the ditto of chefs. <laughs> this, like, for the longest time, Food Wars has been pretty outlandish, but for them to lean so hard into the freakish talent is just stupid. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's just yeah. stupid. The only thing that I like about it is the fact that Soma's like, yeah, no, nah, I don't got any like freakish talent. I'm just, you know, versatile, and I can beat you all. Funky <laughs> and confident, which is what made it, which is what makes the show even better. It's yes. stupid, yeah. but it acknowledges its own stupidity while it also shows you a little bit of porn. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hubris and curi- hubris and curiosity is what makes Soma a good chef. Yeah. The rest of them is kind of like natural, amazing, like godlike talent and that only works in universe, you know. But he's like literally the most natural character, except for Megami. Megami's probably the other one who's prob- who's the most natural character. Oh, but Megami, she's got the power of hospitality, whatever the <laughs> hell that means. And Eishi Tsukasa. The treasure. He, he is Eishi Tsukasa. He is the ingredients whisperer. Again, <laughs> stupid bullshit, but they make it work properly. Like, Mimasaka at least makes sense to an extent. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Takumi and his brother are just really good with a Mezzaluna, which is, I guess, somewhat unusual, but also not. <laughs> but he's, like, really, really good with it. Like, he can spin that thing. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I also love the fact that they're finally like, Yeah, well, if Takumi's brother isn't around, the one guy who can bring the best out of him has always been Yukihiro Soma. That whole episode was amazing. Just because the the bartender villain was just like, you know what? I am all for this guy right now. I just, I loved his concept. Ah, The the anime kind of toned down his entourage. (laughs) I will oh, yeah. Say. Oh, yeah. I, I would not be surprised on that because it was like, oh, OK, so we're going that route with this guy. You know what? Yeah. Fine. Sure. Whatever. When you think <laughs> about his name, that. Don Comma, I I get it. <laughs> I know I've watched enough One Piece to understand what that word means. Uh, <laughs> in the manga, it's all like, sorry, they're a rowdy bunch, but they're very nice. And talking to me, he's like, oh, no, we've, we've had uh, regulars like that. It's no big deal. Though I've never seen this many at one place. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Wait, so are they trans or are they cross dressing? Because these are different <sighs> things. I think they're just cross dressers, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, Japan's freaking weird about their uh, categories of that. <laughs> and usually not very respectful. <laughs> <laughs> so probably the less said the better it was just something that i noticed in the you know the anime not surprisingly cranked up the fan service are you shocked i'm not i'm happy for it <laughs> like uh lanterby who by the way was in more scenes in the anime she shows up in the in the first uh the first task instead of the second one where she originally did which is fine because, you know, there was more time to introduce her and, and all of that. She, uh, her reaction to Tsukasa's dish uh, was certainly flamboyant in the manga, but the whole, like, flourishes of chicken, that, that wasn't there. And also not there when she gradually traced from her chest down to her crotch. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're not, we're not even being subtle <laughs> or clever at this point. <laughs> oh. oh, all the way. It's okay, everyone. She's 24, even though she's wearing a school uniform. I looked it up. <laughs> this is important information. Just she also animal. likes rock concerts. <laughs> More Lanterby. Always good. And also in the beach episode, the the shaking of the chairs thing. They did show Nikumi shaking in the chair, but obviously it wasn't animated. But they didn't have, like, a zoom in on three of the girls' chests. <laughs> and the words on the show, meet. And 
uh, ferment. <laughs> I'm not even sure what the other shirt said. <laughs> Probably had something to do with livestock. <laughs> uh, yeah, they uh, they they Show definitely knows what it wants to do and it executes it perfectly. <laughs> However, there was a fun little bit that they didn't really use where uh, when Soma foreclosed Lantropy, he uh, he was dressed up as a Yakuza guy. <laughs> Like, oh, that's funny. I wish they'd use that. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, man, that Yaki Soba. I really wanted to know. Like, I wish they'd explored it mm. further. There's no way in hell I'll ever eat squid. However, <laughs> like the what? fact that they're that's the one yaki of the few soba. things they actually took effort to explain. Like, yeah, squid is fucking delicious, man. I'm I believe you. I'm allergic. <laughs> uh, never mind. Look here. I, oh, look here. I'm, a, I'm allergic to crustaceans, so I understand. I, I am I can't eat fucking shrimp or crabs and lobsters. Yeah, they just they just but they just talked about the the ingredients. They they didn't say anything about them making it. You know, like mm. because they were they were already serving the dish and everyone was right. going nuts. And like like there was no like gathering of ingredients or talking about techniques or how are they gonna meld like these are all really amazing chefs with completely different styles. You mm-hmm. threw them all together and they're like build a food a, like a little food truck thing or whatever and and make this much money. Like there was no even the, the beach episode right off the bat I was like this alone could be like three episodes. Or four. I could have watched. Or three. Well, yeah, three. I think it was three or four chapters. Yeah, but it could have been more episodes. It could have, but I don't think it necessarily needed more than one, but two might have been fine. My point is, like, everything was rushed. It's all very rushed. And I hate to say it, like, I never want to drag Food Wars out more than it is because they really amp up the drama. But this season would have been better if they'd made it longer because then they could have invested in doing a little bit more with the food. What you might find surprising is they actually added things in the anime. Like, originally, the people selected for the blue, Megami, Takami, and Soma, they they all got a pass just initially. There was no Azur skirmish. There was no soup contest. And also... They just rearranged a lot of things so that they could do the beach episode first, I guess. Because the first time that uh, Soma and Megami meet uh, Suzuki, when he's still going by that name, was when Soma challenged him to... Uh, well, no, he challenged Soma to a battle at at the school. So the beach happened after that. And in the middle oh. of that, there's like month's time where Suzuki is courting Erina and she's getting all flustered about it. <laughs> it's it's kind of cute, but also creepy when you think about other things about it. <laughs> and, it was fucking creepy. Yeah. And uh, originally uh, Jorichiro is the one who shows up and tells Soma that he's been invited to the blue and that happens at the beach. Also what happens at the beach, instead of at her dorm room, uh, that's when Noor kidnaps Arina, and in the manga, they actually tie her up <laughs> to a chair. What the fuck? Oh, that is so much worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they, so- this is an interesting change that I think the anime is far worse for doing. Uh, the whole cloak thing where they look like the clan, yeah, that's that's not in the manga. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of got me right there. I was like, what the fuck? Is this a clan you know I'm seeing right now? Yeah. Well, they, add uh, on to the anime. Huh. Yeah. Uh, there is a guy who, in, in a cloak that does not look like that, in a cloak, uh, is the one who kidnaps Erina and takes her to Asahi's castle, as he calls it. Whatever, whatever it is. No idea where it is. And, okay. uh, yeah. Well, just show all <laughs> and this guy is nowhere in the anime at all. This this guy with glasses and he's wearing like a kimono. He's he's nowhere in the anime. I don't I don't know why they got rid of him, but I guess because he, I don't think in the manga they ever show him cooking. That it it's kind of like he he doesn't need to exist. Whereas initially, Arina already sees Don Kama and Sarge and Asahi uncloaked and this other guy uncloaked and they're like, yeah, we're Noir. 
and I challenge oh. you to a cooking battle because you're not worthy. I mean, you're you're too good for this school and this life, and I'm gonna sweep you off your feet, and I will rule both the light and the dark sides of the cooking world. I'm kingdom okay. hearting this <laughs> this dude. <laughs> This dude, but this is this is really funny. <laughs> when he initially challenges her, and it's like, all right, fine, let's go, let's go right now. She's like tied to a chair. She gets up, give me a cleaver, let's go. Eh, that's my girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. He's like, oh no, no, no. I meant the blue. We're gonna we're gonna have this challenge at the blue, and then if I beat you, we're gonna exchange our vows right then and there. Like, dude, this guy. This Here's guy, what the, the hell? One of the things that Food Wars dude. really did disappoint me with was they never fucking touched on soul food at all, man. Like, no, they really didn't. No, they didn't. I was like, so you trying to say that I know you got your, you know, your big three of fucking cooking a big five, whatever the hell it was. I can't remember at this point, but I'm like, not once did y'all ever fucking mention soul food and... Seriously, that, as a Southerner, I was really goddamn disappointed I, and offended. I'm I'm gonna play the ignorance card here, but was soul food technically derivative of French, which was part of the Big Five? Hell I'm trying no. to remember. Okay, I'm just being an idiot then. No, mm-hmm. like soul food is what it means, man. You literally cooking with your soul on it, man. It's right. some deep fried Southern stuff, man. Like if you, I put it to you like this: if you ever come to the South, bro, I exactly show you what soul food is because. <laughs> You know, people on the podcast, like Sketch, Curl, they have seen me cook. They have seen the pictures. And what I do post on Twitter sometimes. That's so food, man. Well, go on, go on. Yeah. Take fried chicken, for example. Like, the whole fried chicken stuff, the only reason fried chicken is the way it is and popular as it is in Asian cuisine is because they got it. The way the way they have it is derivative of American uh, soul food fried chicken. You well, know? Basically, if black soldiers taught Koreans and Japanese how to cook that, they really taught Koreans because Koreans really, they're, they're fried chicken. Basically, black soldiers taught them how to cook it. And from that point on, you know, it got elevated, but those beginners, they will tell you where it actually came from. And I mean, like, literally, we've been deep fat frying chicken since the beginning in Africa, man. I'm like, seriously. Is like you know they would literally deep fry chicken in fat like the grouse man, and it was it just continued to evolve. I mean, you know, like we said, if, if you ain't seen it, ain't season. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, and <laughs> trust and, me. And something else I appreciate too that that those dishes came over from American GIs. That's how they oh. ended up. World War Two, Vietnam, Korea. They got a taste of that from American GIs. They got a taste of that cuisine. Yeah, so I, it would have been just nice to get a little hint of that. Like, they I talk mean, about, like, like, going around the world rare cuisine, and, like, they don't really – they. I, I agree. Darrell makes a really good point. Like, it, it, they, are make, they make a point of being diverse, but, like, they miss a couple of big items in terms of I mean, global cuisine. I mean, because seriously, like, people try to cook soul food all around the world, but I'm, I'm sorry. Like, some of the places I've been – it doesn't measure up to like what I have here in the South or certain places. I mean, you really got to know your stuff. I'm not saying that, you know, people who cook it in like, you know, up North, whatnot, or, you know, West coast or in certain areas, you know, some people hit that they hit it. It's either hit or miss, but when you have real good soul food, you can taste the damn love in it. I mean, seriously, that's the reason why people like my food. It was like, what did you do to it? That was so special. I was like, it's love. I mean, I mean, I will fuss and cuss in the kitchen all day long while I'm preparing food, like when I make my sweet potato pies, because it's a it's a process. It's long, but the thing is, I'm doing it out of love. Seriously, you must no dedicate angel. all of your cooking to one person. <laughs> no, I don't dedicate to one person because <laughs> I don't like you. I will say, "Fuck you! You can't eat my damn cooking. If I don't <laughs> like you, you cannot have any of my cooking. You yeah, seriously, but- like I, I will not feed you." Yeah, but what Darrell says essentially like sums up what should have been the main plot of this season, which is 
what inspires a person to keep pushing the boundaries of cooking. And for Soma, he constantly pushes himself to find, to beat boundaries, to make people happy with his cooking, like his father, like his mother did. Like, Erin is missing that. Parents were missing that. You know, her parents for a while with each other, which is, you see that dynamic between the parents, which you like totally, like totally that. see mm-hmm. between Erina and Soma, by the way, even though mm-hmm. I wasn't giving them, you do see that same teasing dynamic where he's like, I'm going to make you love my food kind of thing. Like, like you, you find your inspiration through mm-hmm. cooking by being for people that you love for things that you love. And it comes through in your food. Exactly. I mean, she really, like, he wanted her to say his food was delicious so much that it continues to push him. Like, you know, that's his drive. I mean, because he wants her to say his food is good. Now, she knows his food is good, but you know what? She's just too goddamn stubborn to admit it. That's just how it is. Yeah, but she the doesn't thing is, I can't ever admit that. <laughs> admit that. But it's okay, though, man, because it gives him a goal to reach, though. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did like that little bit. And again, that was a missed opportunity because it was just kind of thrown in at the end. You know, I don't know. It felt like they they tried to put too much into this season. And, and so they missed the mark with a lot of things. But like, you know, there's enough I would have loved to have seen in Food Wars, like any of the five seasons. South American cuisine, oh, like yes. Colombia. Yeah, like where was that? They've done amazing things with spices and with with like ingredients and they didn't have it access to the same like European trade could enable like them to access different levels of spices and and South Americans, you know, there's a it's a fairly there's only two kind of uh um uh, geographic like zones there for food to grow. So it's not as wide in terms of trading ingredients, but they managed to come up with some amazing flavors. I mean, what do I, I mean, man, that in, think about the primitive you food. know, in food wars, I would have loved that because they did such a great job with Indian food. They did a fantastic job with Indian food and with European food, of course, because European food is like, like h- high class cuisine, etc. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the British. Yeah, no, don't eat that food. That's crap. Don't eat that. Sorry. Sorry if you're British. We don't mean offense, but your food sucks. <laughs> oh, I mean offense. I mean, y'all need to season y'all food, man, because I don't like bland food. And the only reason why food was good in England when I went was because I went to the ethnic places, man. And, the yeah, only thing I they got, do I got fish. freaking hammered, man. And beer. They do that right, too. <laughs> hey, look here. There's always room for a pint. And being who I am, I did and I did impress the locals a lot. Durrell <laughs> makes an impression. That's why we love him, and that's why he's here. You know what else I hated about this season? That you didn't get enough of the supporting characters. Like Megami, who was supposed to be in the top three, did she even cook? I don't remember anything that she made after she got into Blue. Yeah, she made she, the dog dish. That was off screen. Did we? Yeah, we didn't see that. Yeah, we didn't see that. We did. We did see her fight the the guy with the claw. I yeah. don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah, it it happened. It was <laughs> brief, but it happened. It <laughs> Obviously, like it fight. didn't get as much time as uh, either of Takami's fights, though. Takami's battle with Erina was like, <laughs> blink and you'll miss it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is, yeah. Here's another thing. They actually incorporated more of the supporting cast in the anime, which I think is a good change. Like, uh, the senpais showed up for some uh, motivation, like Kuga and uh, some of the others. And uh, I like Kuga. Yeah. <laughs> Nikami didn't show up until like the finals, whereas in the anime she shows up to bring the meat. Because <laughs> why yeah. not? And <laughs> she brings and the meat. Glasses guy played by Greg Ayers wasn't around to explain the basti, the the pie that uh, Asahi made. <laughs> Which uh, yeah, that's. So we actually did get more of the supported cast in there. And they also incorporated the alumni more in taking down Noir. 
See, in the manga, there was this whole arc before where Nor was teased and members of the Elite Ten went around getting rid of them. And that was apparently some kind of test that uh, Asahi had set about to you know, see what the students of Totsuki were capable of. Like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And Dude, in the anime, they just awesome. throw all of that into the last episode for minutes and also incorporate the the previous members of the Elite Ten for I don't know what reason. I mean, it's nice to see them, but... They it weren't. was funny. It was funny watching uh, Momo just destroy an entire, you know, quote, yeah, quote, and yeah. quote, sweet. It was just... That was probably one of the better ones. We're just like, okay, how do we take down these cults? We make them love our food so much they stop being criminals. Yeah, okay. that's uh, that's some solid logic. <laughs> it's like, oh, but once Asahi wins the blue, we'll have all the amazing ingredients. It's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and that actually would have been really fun to see as a mini arc. I would have loved that. The it, with the, it was with pretty the interesting answer. in the previous season the in the fourth plate they spent like a couple of minutes describing the hot spring event where megami won over this uh guy who thinks he's like the king and that all these uh japanese inns are cute and all but the oh. food isn't good enough and the hospitality isn't good enough so she shows him some hospitality making him a children's dish too wasn't it if i remember yeah. correctly yeah she makes him a children's plate that's gumbo which, yeah yeah girl. it's it's so good it's so cute and they just they just breeze right over that what a what a shame i mean it's not the best storyline but it is it's interesting they definitely could have expanded including that and this just other OVM. stuff and you know it, it would have been would have been good but instead they're like oh this is all happening during the blue i guess we're taking down noir at the same time and it's uh you know you're distracting the like the head honchos of the blue while we do this it's like okay yeah ch- sure so he sure. wouldn't have given you shit whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> and honestly with the blue like i would expect they do a lot of like, you can use any ingredient you want. I mean, to the end, in the beginning, like they had these weird challenges, like the, 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 the go to the shop challenge. Like, I like those weird challenges. That's what you see in real cooking competitions. Like yeah. you something what? featuring this one ingredient and it's a fucking grapefruit. Good luck. Make it work. Like, yeah. that's the stuff that makes cooking competitions fun and interesting like that they're like you can use anything you want and then you know soma makes fried rice i would eat that fried rice however it is a fantasy dish it doesn't exist but i'm saying like there's the tiny no- omelet rice <laughs> yeah there's no Crazy. challenge because they don't have they, they're only challenged against like each other but there's no like we have to make the best out of this one thing you know, that actually is what makes some of these food wars kind of interesting is where they have like one thing that's kind of crazy that they have to work with. And then they really talk about it. And Soma has to learn something like learning to cook with fucking bear meat, for example. The <laughs> convenience know? store brawl. How did Soma fail the first time? Uh, I he just made something redundantly simplistic and he got railed for it because the whole point was basically make but something using <laughs> Like making something out of cheap crap is like Soma's specialty. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I, I think it was more he he had underestimated. Um, I forget what the girl's name was. Lantern B. Yeah, Lantern B's like personality and intent. So the yeah. whole point was like, oh, okay, I, I, I have an idea. Here's the first one. She's like, yeah, it's a three fifty. What? Yeah. <laughs> you oh. actually owe us money. Give me all the money you have. What? Yeah. You only have Japanese yen, fine. <laughs> yeah, it had so, to be in so, American dollars. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, so, so then you had to realize like, okay, when well, I got to, to be. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's fine if he fails the first time, but it's still like, why would he fail? <laughs> Hubris, perhaps, I guess, yeah. maybe. But why did the second dish win then? It just sure, whatever. But I did. I did like the concept of someone being like, 
a last meal, old man. You still got good teeth. You that was such an amazing moment. That was such a. Sh- that was like those epic shit talk from Soma. It was just like, mm-hmm. yeah, here's a couple of wafers and some nice food. It's supposed to be a last meal. It was supposed to be a last it's meal. An appetizer. Yeah, so. Come yeah, to me when app- it's really time for your last meal, old man. Yeah, come to me when you're actually gonna die. You effort. Stop screwing with me. Fine. He was off. gonna kill himself. <laughs> that was the best part. My I was going to kill myself, but now I don't actually want to live. He Wait, had that was guns, actually a thing? Guys. He yeah. came to this competition with two guns, and no <laughs> one sees this as a problem. What? <laughs> That's the power of noir. <laughs> one he uh, borrowed from the Joker. <laughs> have we lost our minds? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and that's, 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 that's noir sure. for you. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. no. no. I would missing... say sh- oh, go on. I was gonna say the show lost its mind when it introduced the concept of the burst as an actual thing that existed in the universe, where ah, yes. if you just eat a food that's so delicious, your your clothes explode, and then they um, just went all the way at the ending. That's called the food gasm, according to the tsunami faithful lingo. They actually, oh, uh, they actually damaged the building. <laughs> they unclothed the building. They went through a lot of clothes in this arc. Like, they had to keep so putting good. on them robes and having them blown to pieces. <laughs> they must have an unlimited amount of robes. <laughs> I, I just assume that whenever the knockeries show up or they have even an inkling they're going to be there, it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, we got to get a bunch of temp ropes. Why? Trust me, I've done this before. I <laughs> it just watches the tower. I've seen this thing before. Bring it for close. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> what am I doing wrong in life that I'm not eating food that makes my clothes shred? <laughs> I'm just saying this is setting unreasonably high expectations for reality for me. <laughs> yeah, all that happens is my shirt gets tighter. <laughs> I just all, happens, all of our food gets tighter, <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> Hey, but you guys, we're missing the most important gross thing out of this whole season. Oh, oh, I think I think I know what you mean. (laughs) Yes. Erina is his half sister because he is her father's son. How do we know this? Oh, wait, drum roll, please. The most amazing thing. God tongue can test for DNA or some shit. Yeah, it's a paternity taste. test. Yes, she tasted the same flavor as she tasted the first time she tasted the her emptiness. Husband. She tasted yeah. the emptiness. It tasted the same. So he wanted to marry his younger half sister. What the actual fuck? I only hope that he doesn't realize that was the case. What are we doing here, guys? Come it's, on. Yeah, you just had to make it a little extra gross, didn't you, Mangaka? <laughs> I just say it when you I did, you did hentai, so we're not <laughs> I know, I know. I, I know, mean, there's that, too. There's that, too. There's also the implication that, uh, so, supposedly, Azumi met Asahi's mother before he met Mana. Didn't he meet Mana when he was, like, still a teenager? <laughs> yeah. I think it was explained that, like, he was at Totski, met Mana, then did, like, after Jirichiro left and he was in that super depression, he he went around the world as well, went to a, went to where he met Asahi's mother, was basically drunk and had a one night. Uh, one night. I think he met Mana after that. I, I forget. But, she, ugh. I mean, do we need more reasons to feel like that guy is a piece of trash? We don't, well, no but wonder. the anime the and the person. manga are, like, really not sure what they think of him. Like, oh, well, he did all these bad things, but he did it for a good reason. No. No. You know what I hated? He still gets his own quote-unquote good ending. Like, he gets to he be does. a part of the family. He's already wanted, and I thought you were a piece of shit. That's Just because not you right. said I don't belong here doesn't mean that you, you like it. That it doesn't redeem Aaron. you at all. That was all on Aaron, and and to me that mostly just boiled down to it being, yeah, I admit I'm a stupid person. I don't deserve to be here. And Aaron is going, no, sit the fuck down. You sit the fuck down. We're all having a family meal. We're gonna be happy. So shut up. 
Like, he actually wanted to do that. He was like, yeah, I have really no right to be here. And Aaron just goes, nope, nope, you're, you're staying the fuck here, and you too, bastard. Sick. The Knockery family will not be lonely anymore. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Gag. Gag. <laughs> Except Aaron uh, still pines for one man. Oh, yeah. So, who's so constantly now... leaving town to go train more. <laughs> Just no, like I his father. Realized, I thought she realized she 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 has a crush on Soma finally, or like did yeah, I miss she did. Yeah, she did. Okay. does. That's what I mean. Yeah. It was nice that they finally dropped that like right at the last minute. It's just like, you know, actually I might have feelings for him. Thank you, Jesus Christ. You finally admit it. The show can end now. Yeah, it's uh it's a sad day for Mega Me and Soma shippers. <laughs> I just call her yeah. best girl. I wasn't worried about that part. It was just Megumi best girl. Fight. Megumi is best girl, though Rindo best is girl. very close second. <laughs> yeah. I love Rindo. Love Megumi. You know what, though? It, it. I mean, it makes sense. They were gearing up towards this, but there was a moment, like, if you think back to after he, when he first battles Asahi, like when Asahi's like, I'm going to marry her. And he's like, he, I think he actually says, no, you're not. I am or something like it. It really does. He kind says, of come up- I have business with her tongue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He Which says that, but like putting it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says that. <laughs> Which is an obvious sexual innuendo, but that's this whole show. So I'm just used to them by now. But yeah. like there was a moment where like they were actually shouting, arguing where he's like, no, I am or something like that. Like, and it almost is, is like implied, like like obviously you knowing Soma, he doesn't ever overtly express any feelings for any of these girls who secretly crushed on him. But it made me feel like like maybe that's a Freudian slip. Maybe part of him like does really <laughs> care about this girl. He's I don't know. Too busy cooking. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Or that he sees his ultimate goal is like my ideal marriage is constantly being challenged to make this woman happy and with my cuisine. Like okay, dude. All right, that's a goal. That's okay. <laughs> Not quite what your father meant, but close but enough. The thing is, I understand where you're coming from on that because, trust me, cooking is my love language. So if I like somebody, I'm going to cook for you. And that's mm. like literally saying something. Because mm. I, like I said, if I don't like you, I'm not going to cook for you. So. You know, I'll give the author props for not letting Soma be the top. Yeah. No, it should have been Erina. It really should have been Erina. Okay, Erina has top dang on energy anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look here. When she put the eyeglasses on, I was oh, like, no. yes. Oh, eyeglasses, Erina. Erina, yeah. That was it right there. I was like, top energy right there. You've, you've, That's the you've, dumb you've seen time skip Erina, yeah? Yeah, when she's 25? Yeah. No. She's got uh, short hair, nice dress. You need to drop that picture in the chat, like, right. Let's <laughs> see. I, I can't do that right now. So, in the anime, <laughs> they do a little flash forward, like, a couple of months. It implies Soma's been out and about for a couple of months, and Aaron is pissed off at him because he's shirking on his duties and also, like, skipping class, and she has to make a, an exception for him so he doesn't get kicked out of the school. But... In the manga, they have a much further down the way flash forward that plays out similarly. But this is like well after they've all graduated. Soma did graduate, albeit troublesomely. And he's come back after some time and he comes back to the restaurant and they have that scene. And it's it's really cute. It, it really is really cute. But it's uh, I don't know. I don't know why the anime changed that. It just because for one thing that really cracked me up is that chapter opens up with Soma getting in trouble with the TSA for bringing a knife in his carry on. <laughs> this guy's some kind of psycho. No, I'm just a chef. Oh my uh, God. She was so- oh my God. What an idiot. Aww. They oh, won't do that it. in anime. Yeah. They won't do that because they want to leap it open and end it in case, gre- in case greedy people want to add another season. But oh, holy please, crap. no. Though I'm not entirely <laughs> sure it could get worse. No, it could yeah. definitely get worse, but... <laughs> I mean, it depends on what they're going for. 
Yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, if it's actually like, hey, we're going to take the time to actually like make it work, then sure, fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's just, hey, we want to make a cash grab, no, no, sit down. Stop. Yeah. So they did finally touch on uh, stories about Soma's mom and this. And uh, originally when he was having that conversation with Erin on the balcony, he doesn't bring up his mom at all, which I think is a good change. So they kind of rearranged where those flashbacks happen, because in the manga, for the most part, they all happen when Jorichiro is invited to a Nakari family dinner after all of this is sorted out. And he's like, yeah, let me tell you about my wife. And it's a really great flashback. I think the uh, the manga is, is, is really nice there. And they even go into detail. Uh, well, not so much detail, but they at least show uh, the implication of when she gets sick and dies. And there's this really sweet moment. I don't think it happened anywhere in the anime where... After she passes away in the grieving period, someone's like, hey, dad, let's have a cooking competition. To, you know, kind of get him out of his funk. They show something like that where he it, but it's more it looks like it's more like the son on from the grief rather than helping his father. It was it was a real thing, but they did do something similar. Oh, yeah. Maybe they reframed it. So it was Jorichiro challenging Soma. Or something like that. No, it was it was so much challenging, Jurichiro. It oh. was so much, challenging, but it was like it, it was like you know he 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 lets go his protege to come back for his family, and then his son like moping around, and he's like, Dad, let's have a food war. And the context of that is, you know, what he he's talking about, what he learned from his mother, and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. So, also the anime does a, a little bit of effort to try and make it seem like Jorichiro is a more caring individual, but he actually tells Asahi, hey, you could come with me. But he obviously doesn't. <laughs> That's not in the manga. <laughs> yeah. So, they made some changes. I don't know. All Not all good. Some for the better. Some not so much. It's just kind of interesting to to note the differences in my opinion but uh that's that's why i brought it up i love the scenes with um the mother i thought those were great yeah i I love that they didn't even need to like i think it would have been fine if they had decided later to talk about her being sick or whatever i liked what they the way they did it was showing that her failures and teaching her son that was a good inspiration to help him win that final competition against mm-hmm. Asahi. That part really was great. Like I was like, okay, this is one of the best parts of this season, you know, and it was a uh, crappy season, but it's just a good thing. <laughs> that and it helps sets up uh, Soma's uh, fascination with making shit dishes and making people eat them. Yes, I love that part. yes exactly. Yeah. Though his father also indulges in that. <laughs> Though he probably funny. got it from his wife. <laughs> Let me try peanut butter on octopus. Uh, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. That's probably not too bad. I mean, the squid is, or the octopus is at least thrilled or something like that. Yeah. You first. You Wasn't guys one first. of them honey and octopus? That I mean, I don't like seafood, so I probably wouldn't like it in general. But somebody who likes octopus? I don't know. I mean, I could see somebody throwing some uh, peanut butter into takoyaki and it being not terrible. <laughs> But I mean, okay. that's just me. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like peanut butter. <laughs> is there is there really anything that peanut butter doesn't work with? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of weird combinations Pizza? involving peanut butter. Yeah, uh, you know, know, no, I think it does work okay on pizza. It is a dessert pizza, probably. Like a margarita. You would put peanut butter on a margarita pizza? Hell no. No, I mean, exactly. you'd, want, you'd want to have something else on it. Like, if, if, uh, I think I've actually done this. I put peanut butter and chocolate chips on a pizza because I'm a Ninja Turtles fan <laughs> and a weirdo. <laughs> and yes, I love peanut butter no, and because... chocolate. And I thought, I'm going to try it. I mean, yeah, peanut butter no, doesn't really no. add anything to pizza because it's already super savory. So you really need something sweet to balance that out. But, you know, peanut butter and marshmallow or peanut butter and chocolate. Peanut butter and jelly. 
on a baseball bat. Peanut butter and jelly on a pizza might not be terrible if you like the jelly. <laughs> People are weird. Or eat peanut butter on the case. Yeah. Yeah, no, there is nobody no? weirder than the folks that eat chitlins. <laughs> fucking horrible bastards. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's the soul food that Darrell will not endorse. I do not like chitlins, people. No. I mean, I don't you think never I would either. You peanut butter on celery? What? 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 I thought Dance that was on like the log, man. Everything. Yeah, peanut butter on celery is great. What do you? Okay, I was gonna say. I was never a peanut butter fan apples. in general. And on apples, it's good. It's good on Never apples. cared for peanut butter. Never cared for it at all. Maybe creamy. Never cared for it. Hmm. Dude, it's got to be crunchy for me, man. <laughs> Ooh, creamy versus crunchy. I do like some crunch. Like yeah, man, I eat fucking Captain Crunch. <laughs> Peanut like, butter without crunch. Fuck, no, regular Captain Crunch without milk, man. That's how fucking tough I am. Yeah. That that's uh that's pretty tough. Oh. It gets it gets like chalky. <laughs> hey, dude, I like Captain Crunch, man. You just <laughs> right now. But, yeah, oh, it's perfectly fine corn cereal. <laughs> yeah, I think we could probably wrap up this conversation, but uh, oh gosh, I think I think there was there's one more thing. Oh, there's there's a couple more leaps in logic here that don't quite <laughs> don't quite gel for me. Like, uh, why why is why is there no self flavor for Asahi's dish at all? That doesn't I mean, I get the point they're trying to make, but it also doesn't quite make sense. <laughs> like, oh, you didn't put anything of yourself into this dish. They also play it off like, oh, Asahi doesn't want to have fun with his cooking like Soma. But no, early in the storyline, he one up Soma by doing something that's quote unquote more fun. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. It doesn't want to <laughs> keep a consistent anything, really, <laughs> which is... That's stupid. <laughs> oh, some props to the manga that uh, they they actually do more than just the uh, tasting paternity test to to prove that Asahi's DNA. I, they say they haven't gotten the DNA results back yet, but they 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 did some some other testing besides. Yeah, look, <laughs> tasting food is not a paternity. Don't test. say tasting paternity test. The tasting me out, paternity please. test. Uh, it... You're forgetting the straight up child abuse where Erina is forced to like battle non stop for reasons. Yeah. Oh, that's another interesting change. In the manga, she doesn't have to do that grueling uh, fight against all the rejects thing. I think that's actually a better way of doing it than what they actually did before, which is you get to the semi-final rounds and she's just in a tournament bracket where she has to face off against like 10 people back to back to back to back to back. Which I suppose is basically the same thing, but it's... I don't know. <laughs> that seems like it. It it's at least equally grueling, but... Eh... I don't know. I did kind of like the concept of the bookmaster being like, all right, all of you have a chance to return to this competition if you can take her down. That's how much she wants Erin out of the competition. Which is no, that I thought that was it was awful just because I mean, I didn't concept of like a second chance. However, it was really close that it was it was implied that she's like cooking herself question. And it just it just felt like a really abused concept to me. Like mm -hmm. like Erina herself handled really well, like you're gonna be my bride shit. She's like, no, that's not gonna happen ever. You know, that's because like she didn't ever feel obliged to agree to that contract, even though it's a disgusting <laughs> element. Yeah. However, like I'm gonna cook myself exhaustion at the most prestigious event where I really actually do demonstrate some skill, like it's exhausting being one meal, you know, let alone 50. I just thought that whole thing was really, I didn't like that at all. Yeah, it makes uh, Soma cooking five dishes all at once and slapping them together kind of paltry in comparison, doesn't it? Uh -huh. 
just shows, it just shows how bad course, Baron is. Of course, Soma would do it that way. <laughs> I got to combine all five into one dish. His okay. fantasy. <laughs> but he can do it because he's so fast, as we've constantly been shown. He's just so fast at preparing food. I did like that they called back to his time working at the restaurant because I liked I liked how they like raked him over the coals for being a screw up at that point. It's like, hey, you think you're hot shit, but turns out you really can't handle yourself in my kitchen <laughs> until he can after much study. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like <laughs> it's like I can hear you, chef. You don't have to keep telling me it's like, yeah, OK, Soma, you're hearing voices. <laughs> It's kind of weird, bro. Whatever. But here's the other thing that I feel like did the author really intend this from the beginning? The whole uh, best jewels generation to help Erina shine as well as she can by battling all cute. of them. Like, uh, it's it's a fine concept, but I don't know if this is what they were thinking from the beginning. It kind of feels like a late in the story edition. <laughs> eh. I guess it's fine. That's that's in both the anime and the manga. <laughs> I actually wondered if it was exclusive to the anime, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> it's a fine concept. I mean, that's basically the whole point of the, you know, <laughs> the school. <laughs> well, I mean, how else would they have these, uh, like... Pro, all this these prodigies in one mm-hmm. place i mean is quite extraordinary the varying skills so mm-hmm. i it did like that sequence only because it kind of brought together like oh that's how this happened this isn't just purely suspension of disbelief he you just hand on pick and out. these particular people yeah he went and sought them out and he brought them together because he really wanted to elevate it and and you know make his daughters um experience to be one of of enjoyment of food and not ultimately it making her sick like his daughter mm-hmm. so. <laughs> i will try your dish soma yukihira but i will have a bucket on hand <laughs> okay that one didn't make me wretch but it's not nearly good enough yet <laughs> okay lady <laughs> though real talk if i couldn't taste things I would totally get my nutrients from an IV just because it's easier. <laughs> I don't yeah. like chewing. What? what does you prefer? Send them my way because that that's the cuisine I want to be eating. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. Uh, <laughs> this breast milk is bland. Well, excuse me, Princess Arena. <laughs> I mean, it, it's God. it's funny in concept, but it's so messed up. It's really gross. Yeah, no, that was I forgot about that. Oh my God, the breast milk one. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow. No, oh, I can't even touch. Only the I finest baby that. formulas for Miss Erina. <laughs> so when I just ain't gonna cut it, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, at an early age. Oh man! Look here, that baby only gets the finest of breast milks. Yeah, that goes up there in like the worst things they could have put in that. That's the worst. <laughs> I just appreciate the fact that she had like she she kind of had like that cow yak. Like, eh, no, no, this is gross. It's like, <laughs> ew. <laughs> on like I'm a, I'm I'm saying full sentences as a baby reaction. Like, so what? bland. <laughs> Well, she's very advanced for her age, you know, the knockeries, <laughs> you know, very That's advanced, bad. very advanced. Oh, uh, what a ridiculous show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just a shame how far it fell from greatness. It really is. Because I don't know. I, I feel like the. uh the regimental food war and the <laughs> the central arc, even though that was pretty outlandish and stupid, it still it, it was it was okay. I, it, that would have been an okay place to stop. Um, 
Still pretty annoyed at Akira for turning traitor in that, though. <laughs> I know, I know. He's going to protect the Shiomi in her studies, but... Uh. Oh, yeah, in the manga, uh, Akira and Mimasaka both just turned down their invites to the blue because they got better things to do, I guess. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. What? <sighs> that... Okay, so in the Regimental Food War, it was already... Takami, Megami, Erina, and Soma. Who do we have as our cooks in this next arc? Same group. Where's Akira? Where's Karakuba? <laughs> Come on. This is... So, it's so disappointing if you like those other characters. Uh, though I do yeah. like that, that Takami and, and Megami get plenty of shine. It's... It's just, it's just a shame because, like, the Akira and Karakuba are, are like, Ryo are, 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 like, good enough to, to face off against Soma, right? So, why, why aren't they here at the Blue Moon, man? It's... Yeah, no, they sidelined a lot of great characters, and it's, it was really a shame. So, they cut out the quality food explanations. They cut out the quality recipes. They come up with a bunch of random bullshit <laughs> and a really stupid plot line to end everything on. Despite all that, I do kind of like how it ends where, you know, Erina has managed to make her mother happy, even though that's kind of a twisted thing, all things considered. But Erina has made her mother happy. Soma feels like he's achieved something great, and Erina and Soma are gonna like be forever attached to the hip, being you know <laughs> whatever kind of relationship that actually is. <laughs> She's a fucking sundry dude. Do we need to say? Do yeah. kind of um love about this series that um it's it's a way like there's no investment emotionally, and I like having something like that on. And, and of course, we're, we're ragging on the show, but like it showed on I Toonami. Got some emotional <laughs> investment in this series. I didn't have any. I had no emotional investment in this season at all. Well, um, in this season, like, okay. Except, no, but... except for the stuff between Soma and Erin. That that was something, at least. I was expecting more silliness, and I got exactly what I wanted. So everything else on that was just the frosting. And boy, count. howdy, What's did you get some silliness. I mean, freaking clown guy, right? We haven't even talked about the clown guy who's cooking with high heat and cylindrical force. It's like, that's that's a fun concept. I don't, I don't dislike that. <laughs> He's one of the Nora that I'm like, yeah, that's ridiculous enough. I can roll with that. <laughs> but what happened to the clown guy? I guess he just... Actually, you they show done by Asahi and he's yeah, he's like, I need your power before I face off against uh, Aishi Tsukasa, I guess. <laughs> like, all right, whatever. I don't think he actually used it in that match, but uh. <laughs> I didn't show him at least attempting to. Hmm. Yeah, the whole cross knives thing is just—it's just so <laughs> so stupid. It's 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 stupid and dumb, but it's also like on par for what the show had been doing for a while. I guess. A natural evolution into the what the fuck am I watching mentality. I mean, there's been plenty of Shonen Jump stories that have, you know, <laughs> they're not sure how to progress the story, so it just... Yeah, it just... Uh, they just it start using tropes. They just do that. I almost forgot. I uh, I have some CJ commentary on the all of this... Uh, so he says, uh, basically my biggest issues stem from how ridiculous the last arc became. It wasn't food wars anymore, almost like the creators felt they needed to go further than necessary, and the last arc faltered into something, I don't know what it was. I dislike <laughs> the rewards the main cast got after Central, which I think forced the story to evolve how it did. And I asked, um, so what he's saying is, having them just become the Elite Four was probably not a good way to have a continuation. <laughs> and I agree with that. He thinks like the last arc probably should have been like a big tournament to decide the the rankings of the Elite Four, or this should have been part of it. That is I kinda, watch that. Yeah. 
another you know, like really <laughs> good cooking competition. Not this nonsense that the blue became, which is really a shame because what they implied about the blue is that it is like such an impressive competition where the best chefs in the world duke it out. But no, we got to make it all weird. <laughs> well, it wasn't. That's the thing. It wasn't about the best chefs competing because there was a bias. Like, people who were noir got passed automatically and all this other shit. So, like, like it was everything. They had talked about the blue in previous seasons, and then they didn't even show any of that elite-level cooking. So it was it was a huge letdown. The whole the whole writing, this it was just a disaster from start to finish that could have been so much better in fifty different ways, and it wasn't. Yeah. He also felt that the build up to meeting Aaron his mother didn't make any sense, nor made him care. <laughs> and <laughs> that the villains, while eccentric in previous seasons, were at least realistic, nor is comic book BS. Agreed. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I love his comments. Those are hilarious. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big <laughs> it's a big mess. <laughs> they uh they should have either ended with the previous arc more or less, or I don't know, rewrote it the way Kuro suggested. <laughs> it's just not <laughs> it's not good. It's not a high point to go off on. It's uh it's a real shame. I don't hate the ending, but I do not like this arc. <laughs> it is not a good storyline. <laughs> I'm the hung, kind of hungry, I feel, like, after you go to have so-called f- fine cuisine, and then afterwards you're like, I really need a pizza. That's how <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was A pizza with pizza. peanut butter and chocolate chips? No. <laughs> <laughs> If you say pineapples and ham, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, no, I I like pineapples. I like ham. I don't like them together. No, no not, not for use, me. No, I use pineapple juice to um, cook my ham. I really but, don't like, in particular, pine, pineapple and marinara. No, I don't. I don't like that combination. It's great for tenderizing meat, but I would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was I like. I use sparkling water to make the meat nice and tender. <laughs> how did he do that? I need I need specific instructions on how he did that. Like I don't understand. <laughs> it's the carbon bubbles. Did you just know that? Did you just like, what? I mean, what does that mean? What does that fucking mean? I like, don't understand. Like the honey in the first season made sense. I get it. It's practical. But uh, I don't know. I honestly could not tell you how many things they're just totally making up at this point. <laughs> Trust but me, it's... anybody who can boil water could understand that some of this was just complete bullshit. <laughs> and I have I know people who have actually burned water, man. <laughs> yeah. And as a cooking connoisseur as yourself, Darrell, I must ask, does this series final arc insult you more than Dimension W. Yes. 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 This was worse. Okay, this yeah. was worse. <laughs> but I told people, look here, man, look here, it did not take me long to figure out what the hell Dimension W was, man. Hmm. I literally said what Dimension W was and nobody paid any fucking attention until the end. Because I told them, I was like, look here, quantum mechanics is a hobby of mine. I freaking hate math, but I like quantum mechanics and physics, man. I understand it, you know, on a certain level. I just don't like doing equations. I can do this shit, but I just don't like doing it. But I told people what Dimension W was, but this right here with Food Wars, man, I would watch Dimension W again before I watch this um, fifth plate, which I'm going to, which sadly, I am actually going to buy the last DVD so I can have a complete set because that's the live. I already did because I got a ridiculous discount on it. Paul, would you watch Dimension W again or The Fifth Blade? I'd watch both. They were okay once you accept the faults in them. But then again, I'm also incredibly open minded. <laughs> I'll tell you, I would still watch The Fifth Plate over Tokyo Ghouls in a second. Oh! Ooh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
I'm still not watching fucking Tokyo Ghoul. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, okay. actually. I mean, sorry, what about Promise Neverland? Oh, uh, season two. No. Oh, okay, we do not Promise talk about Never- Kay's meal here. <laughs> Promise Neverland season two versus Food Wars fifth plate. I would rather watch Food Wars fifth plate because at least yeah, it's a little entertaining. <laughs> it is. It is a little entertaining. Basically, the, the, what happened the, with um, and it's Promise also Neverland. like Food Wars has always been a stupid storyline, right? The yeah. Promise Neverland was a good story, and they yeah. just ruined it. Yeah. And only yeah. in the anime. Yeah. Please read the manga. But yeah, That's season two of uh, The Promised Neverland just meant that people didn't get their kids' meals. <laughs> <laughs> How many times are you going to make that joke? I know you said that. <laughs> no, no, I believe in you using that joke as much as I can, man, because, hey, <laughs> it is what it is, man. You know, that was like, fuck them kids. Don't forget your choking hazard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is not a happy meal. <laughs> nope. Oh my God. I mean, Seriously, man, like choking on the Lego. <laughs> oh boy! I All right, thing, man. we've uh, we've we've definitely exhausted this particular topic. Now I know we had another topic that we were considering talking about, but um, does anybody want to do that? <laughs> no. No, we want to save it for another time. Please. I forget what the topic was, but uh, hmm, probably I for mean, the best. I don't know. Kuro was pretty passionate about it. Kuro, do you want to? We're talking about Crunchy Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. Oh, that. Uh, honestly, with what, ha- what? So I don't know if anyone has seen the new as as of today. Um, so SAG AFTRA went on strike because they were trying to negotiate overall with all these different businesses about um, negotiating good contracts and and the the cost of AI and other things with them. And um, it's really interesting how this has been a consistent theme about the way the actual human beings who do these jobs are treated. And this isn't like we're making this this old school conversation about unions. And essentially, that's that's just a symptom. That's just one way people have found to deal with it. But you have these companies. Crunchyroll wasn't supposed to be this monumental, big, like Paramount style organization. It was about fans for fans, you know, made up of people who loved anime. And I don't feel like that's what it is anymore. I feel like it's a big isn't soul sucking machine and they don't care they don't care about their actors they don't care about their fans and and these are people who are willing to fucking spend money we're willing to spend money for these products but if you're going to treat everybody like shit and treat us like we're stupid and not know that you're treating everybody like shit then don't fucking expect people to react and the worst part is it's not like now because they bought everybody out there's not a whole lot of competition outside of pirating to get this content. So they're still going to have a solid American uh, and Western um, people buying into their service, which annoys the fuck out of me, man. They're also international. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm just talking about like the U.S. audience, because I know on the U.S. side, there's only certain, you know, alternatives available like and we don't have we don't have anime streaming on television except for Toonami literally so if you want to watch it you have to buy one of these services so you know I I don't have a Crunchyroll subscription I have not in the past year and a half two years since they did the stupid merger with Funimation and I find the whole thing absolutely distasteful it's unprofessional and I feel like they can we they can do better They can fucking do better. That's what I have to say about that. You are absolutely right. They're just uh, interesting thing about that. uh, The SAG and AFTRA uh, strike. It's specifically for television and film. So that does not affect dubbing. Apparently it, even though obviously that involves television and film. Yeah. Nobody cares about dubbing, of course, except us. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a separate, uh, separate contract apparently so if you're at all wondering if this is going to affect the union dubs of bleach or zom 100 or anything else you don't have to worry about that stop worrying about things that don't matter (laughs) start worrying about the things that do matter like 
these poor actors are <laughs> getting paid two hundred dollars one time and their residuals for a streaming show are less than a dollar for a year. <laughs> That's how bad the deal for streaming is for these shows. That is absolutely ridiculous. And <laughs> the powers that be are coming up with crazy things like, here's a concept. We're going to have uh, an actor come in for a session. We're going to record them. We're going to record their data and then we own them as a backdrop extra for eternity. No way in hell would that ever survive a court. That's I don't believe crazy. That's crazy. No for wonder second. they're striking. Contracts are a but weird see, thing. This, but this is my thing, though, right here. Okay, now when the AI art came out, a lot of people, you know, a lot of artists were up in uproar about this. But, you know, you had a whole bunch of people saying, well, you know, I'm still creating through this AI, you know, generator, so it's tickling my heart. But now that it's affected other people, when something negative affects the people, that's when other people start to care. So this is what I'm looking at. Like, now that it's negative affecting them, a lot more people are caring about it because my thing is, I felt like this with AI art, which I don't support and I never will. Because I'm not going to buy any at any point. The whole point of this is they're stealing somebody's likeness. And the thing mm-hmm. is, with some of the AI art that I saw, I looked at it very closely and I saw a lot of my friends' styles who are artists. I saw their stuff. Like, literally, this was their actual art style and it pissed me the fuck off. So, this is the same thing. You're basically stealing someone's voice, their likeness with AI. And then saying, fuck you, we're not going to pay you for your time and talent. But see, that's your fucking likeness. Mm-hmm. I want to get paid. My thing is, fuck that shit, pay me my fucking work. Pay me my salt. Otherwise, you know, it. I know they say it's a gray area, but no, you're basically stealing somebody's voice. You're stealing their talent. AI is meant to be used as a damn tool. It's not a know-all, fix-all, the things that you don't want to pay for. Now, being used as a tool, AI is a great fucking thing. But you still need that human touch because there is no fucking way I will let a machine actually operate on me or do any other things that are crucial that has to have a human hand on it that fine tunes. Uh, yeah, I forget who I read this from, but uh, somebody made the terrible comment that, man, I didn't think when the, the robots took over that it would be the humans doing all the hard labor and the robots making all the art and music. Yep. I mean, what a bleak future. <laughs> so, so actually, there is something about all of this that I feel like could be a really big opportunity for any actor that's brave enough to do this. Because, oh, so old school Hollywood, you all know I love film history. Olivia de Havilland, she's the actress that you might know from Gone with the Wind. Um, back in the day, the the um, studios would contract with actors and have these exclusive contracts with the actor so they could only film their films and it prevented them from picking scripts that they thought they lo- that they could audition for any other script based off of like the content of the script right it limited them so Olivia de Havilland she sued MGM and she won it was a Supreme Court case and it completely changed the way the film industry went. For the better, actually. And now that's what we have today because it's, it's it's not at all like like an actor audition based off of their talent. I feel like something like really needs to happen in the anime industry to shake things up in this. Have a, a monumental Supreme Court case. Have someone be brave to take them to court. Like Kyle did a great job with with promoting this and didn't he, he stepped back from a role that may, you know, that he was well, with mob psycho but i feel like like take it one step further you know? if they're if they're using your voice and telling you you can't audition you can't be in this other role take them to fucking court you have it's on your side the legal system would be on your side just be brave to go and do it and i i mean the you know notwithstanding the supreme court is particularly shitty but in general you know the concept of that of ch- the status quo with entertainment and 
can change for the better is the only way in well, not the only way. Hopefully there are people that are good out there that'll make those choices. But barring that, barring the good choices of good, of, of people in corporate positions, you really have to have someone brave enough to make that challenging step and take that action. It's worked in the past. It could work in the future. So that that's one, you know, thought that I have. Throw that out there and leave it if you hmm. You know, you have so many people that are so scared to be fucking whistleblowers to step out there because they don't want to lose their livelihood. I get it, but sometimes yeah. when you're in a position where, you know, let me see, how can I put this? If you're in a position where you have some power or some leverage, and if it's going to cause you to lose things, then you still have to risk it all for the greater good. You know, sometimes that's just what, you know, that selfless, selfless service is. That's what that self-sacrifice is for. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you really have to just sacrifice what you have to protect it as a whole. Because what's to say, like, even though you have it right now, it's not going to be taken from you later. And the thing is, I would Mm -hmm. rather fucking fight for what's mine than let somebody fucking take it from me, you know, from under my nose when I had a chance to fight. Yeah, the studio's over here being like, why do you want to put and yourself to honest, these that's... financial hardships? Well, we wouldn't want this, except we're already in financial hardships, even with <laughs> without yeah, going on strike. Healthcare. Yeah, the health care healthcare thing is ridiculous. I work in health care, and trust 83% me. Eighty-three percent of SAG AFTRA doesn't qualify? That's yeah. insane. Gotta love yeah. how our society just fucks okay. everything over. Healthcare is such a terrible thing in this country. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but I mean, I, the De Havilland case is such a perfect parallel because everything that she won from her case is exactly, I could say, is, has, is what is happening with these voice actors and Crunchyroll right now. And that's what really makes me extra angry is because there is legal precedence that says this is illegal. And yet they're still somehow getting away with it. Like what? What? How is this happening? This Fuck you, Crunch. Sorry. But that's not okay. It's not okay that you do that. It's not okay. Yeah, there's I'm a sorry. lot of things that Crunchyroll are doing that are not okay. From, like, okay, there, there are things to be petty about, for sure. But, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a big deal that they basically don't put any of their shows up with closed captions. That is terrible that is uh i mean yeah sure the subtitle versions have captions because they have to because otherwise you couldn't understand anything going on but even like their original series not that anybody cares but like their original series don't have closed captions on the english versions sometimes that's the only version that is on there so there's no closed captions that is ableism okay (laughs) we gotta cut that out crunchy roll they're also terrible at releasing things physically. They like they own so much of the anime that's coming out of Japan right now, and they're putting out like five at most a month. It's insane. Funimation was putting out more before, and even Crunchyroll, when they were like divvying out their shows to other companies, was at least doing a decent amount. Crunchyroll was uh, great back in the day, man, and then they just went to fucking shit. It's, I'm just going to be honest with you. They went to fucking I shit. I just don't understand how this amalgamation became the worst parts of both the prior Funimation and the prior Crunchyroll. Just absolutely the worst parts of both. Corporate greed and capitalism and the FTC not being able to do a court case to save their lives. Yes, that definitely. Plus, they want to... <laughs> of course... This whole uh, strike thing is probably a feather in their cap with like, oh, you see, it's good that we don't deal with the union. But that is not the lesson to be learned here, Crunchyroll. I'm just seeing repeat things happening all over again with my job right now. I'm just like, oh, God, I hate everything. Just just to let people know that guillotines only cost $500 to make. Hmm. (laughs) I'm just putting that out there, okay? (laughs) <laughs> extreme you say you say yeah it's just it is just frustrating like they got a lot of stuff and if you want to watch anime pretty much come to them except for the ones that end up on netflix or hulu 
Like, or high I'm dive. Still pissed they haven't put the Funimation catalog. Yeah, over I watch stuff on Netflix or Prime now. Or well, there's yeah. always just raising a flag. And getting yeah. That shit. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I got Crunchyroll for right now, man, but to be honest with you, man, I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep it. Look, I'm <laughs> real happy that they finally put all the One Piece stuff up there. That's great. That's it's very nice. I can no longer be subscribed to Funimation now if I choose to, but I would keep Funimation because they actually have closed captions on all their episodes. <laughs> And uh, frankly, I just prefer watching dubs there. I think they're, I, I don't know, something about their player works better for dubs. Probably because it's designed that way. Not that either of their players are particularly good. They're kind of both not great, <laughs> but they're passable, I guess. But yeah, it's, um, piracy is really winning out here. <laughs> we're right. offering a much better experience. <laughs> Come, you hearties, let's get on the boat and scourge the seas. For no money. <laughs> like, yeah, everything's, was, everything's know, free, it's just your morals. <laughs> you know, I used to say that pirate was bad. Yeah, I, you know better, you'd be better because it hurts people in the industry, but, you know. They're already doing enough job of hurting themselves and everybody yeah. else at the same time. So it's like, what would you rather do? Hurt the corporations while still technically supporting everybody else or, you know, yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah, you know, it's much. like this probably gonna piss some people off. But hey, fight the fucking machine, pirate all yeah. the fuck you want. That's what I intend to do. Part of the reason for this strike is because you know stuff is just disappearing when it doesn't do well enough. Pirate the fuck out of shit, people. I'm saying rebel. This and time I, I am flaming the fires of rebellion at this point. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, actors get more money from the um, from going to cons anyway. They've said that themselves. I mean, they mm-hmm. they have discouraged in the past like pirating, but they have been open that they get a lot of their their money from going to these cons. So essentially, if you want to support voice actors, go to comic cons and meet some friends, have a great time. Exactly. Your money there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then get your pop figures autograph for like $60, but it's for a good cause so that your favorite voice actor has gas money. I put it to you like this. I went to cons. We've done this podcast. I made friends with voice actors. So we're good. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that Crunchy will continue to find more and more ways to tick us off besides, you know, yeah, holding true. various shows hostage, probably, maybe, not entirely sure, but probably. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can't help but, uh huh, at the fact that Spy Family and Chainsaw Man are on Hulu and Demon Slayer is on Hulu and Netflix. And I just can't help but, uh huh, about all of that. But hey, Netflix pretends like they have money, and so does Disney. So I guess that's understandable. Tommy ain't got no money. <laughs> yeah. But if you're concerned about uh, the strike affecting Tsunami's upcoming originals, it shouldn't. Like I said, dubbing, union or otherwise, is not affected by it. And uh, neither is animation. So, like, all the few cool things that Cartoon Network has in development, they won't be halted. But if you were looking forward to the third Spider-Verse movie, as I'm sure many people are, yeah, n- now not just the animation is a reason to hold that one back. Because <laughs> it's not fully recorded, and they can't even do pickups legally. Uh, well, not legally, but you know, contractually. They, they cannot do line pickups or any other additional recording for that movie and i mean obviously they need a lot of time for that animation so it should be pushed back it absolutely should be pushed back i can wait it was a killer cliffhanger but i can wait but also if you were looking forward to deadpool 3 might as well call that one deadpool 3 dead in the water (laughs) because yeah the writers are on strike and so are the actors and this is uh, honestly, a good thing for that movie, because if only the writers were on strike during the filming of Deadpool 3, that movie would turn out terrible. One of the reasons why uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine was so bad was because it was happening during the writer's strike. 
Ryan Reynolds is not allowed to ad lib during a writer's strike because he is a writer and a producer. <laughs> so, yeah, we dodged a bullet on that one, even though it means that probably really cool movie will take quite a while longer to come out. Well, hey, we can always hope that the industry will, you know, figure this out sooner than later. But, yeah, as long as it takes, I'm fine. I got plenty of things to watch. I have too many things to watch. They could stop making all things forever, and I would probably not run out of things to watch. I need to go grab the new <laughs> Tenchi, actually, and start watching that. Oh, yeah, that's on Crunchyroll, the GXP sequel. Paradise Wars, we got another one, and I got to go watch that. I'm oh, going to go take a Oh, man. <laughs> I'm happy we're still getting it. I could go catch up on Ruby. I need oh. to finish. I need to do that too. I was like halfway through season six and I got it. If there that. is one See, thing I that know. I will. Yeah, sorry. Uh, if there is one thing that uh, on. I will give Crunchyroll props for is that they have really upped their game with releasing movies in theaters. Like I went to see the Psychopath movie and I was able to see it dubbed. Uh, there were plenty of showings in my area. It was nice. I mean, it's still not that many showings in general, but some of the movies have gotten like at least a whole week, which is certainly an improvement over many things. So that's nice. That's uh, that's good. I I like to see the fact that Sony owning all these things has led to anime movies being more widely available. But there's just way too many other problems for that to be adequate to make up for everything else. <laughs> Still, it's nice, but fix your shit, folks. Yeah, seriously, please fix it. <laughs> like, have a dang meeting with the with the union, please. It's it's such an embarrassment what happened with Mob Psycho season three. Such an embarrassment, and it still takes do me better. Off. No, yeah. do better. Stop acting like the mafia. Seriously. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's not really that hard. Meanwhile, Netflix over here getting back the whole cast of Black Clover, making it a union dub, and Steve Bloom is in it. Well, yeah. Yeah. That uh, was Clover surprising. fans stay winning. That was very surprising. I need to go watch that actually. I mean, it'll never end up on Toonami though, unfortunately. But yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. That well, is... so different than what happened with Maiden Abyss, even though they tried. So it's just one of those, oh, hey, it's a marathon week. Let's go watch something. That... Let's go watch that. <laughs> Indeed. I, I think, I think honestly, their only way forward with this stuff is just, I, I mean, with the exception of some of the shows they've already contracted for and finishing up those, it's, it's going to have to be like 50% original content for them to just keep going, really. Mm-hmm. Seems that way. Well, we will see what their plans going forward are soon enough. They got that panel at Comic-Con coming up. And uh, hopefully, Jason's claim that there are several announcements is, you know, not just <laughs> lip service. You better be showing fully coolly shoegaze and grunge there, because that announcement for the, for, for the original coming back to the block is going to be really weird if you ain't got something there. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that that is coming soon though i do wonder if uzumaki will air before any of those i swear to god if they they need to have another trailer song for that one because bro you <laughs> they, they have to at this point or it's like bro what are you doing with this series uh, is it gonna take us five years to see this series <laughs> five years for a four episode or i don't even want i don't even know how long it took them to do housing complex c but crying out loud Less than two years, I think. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Well, they're giving it plenty of time to cook, which... I mean, that art set... better be fucking spectacular. It's going to set expectations to way too high to the point that they, like... <laughs> Another like June... this... There's no way they're going to be able to live up to the time. It's... Like, I don't want to say that. I really don't, because I don't think that's fair. But, yeah, they're kind of setting themselves up for that. <laughs> It's unfortunate. Meanwhile, Toonami is very boring right now, aside from Dr. Stone, though the Superman show is good. Superman's very good. 
I love Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone is so good. Mm-hmm. So good. I just love watching Kohaku enjoy doing things. <laughs> Wee. Oh, there's Kohaku. What? The blur. Ah. Uh, and she so enjoyed the not good bread. <laughs> I mean, that was that was a funny moment because it was just like, you know what? I actually would not blame them for thinking that tasted better than everything else they ate. Yeah, just, I mean, like, in comparison, like when they when they did the ramen before, when they did the yeah. instant ramen. Like, yeah, I mean, compared to everything else they've eaten, it's probably really good. That ramen looks gross. That looks so unappetizing. Ugh. Yeah. And now, now they actually have, you know, wheat. They can actually make real noodles. So I hope they give it another go. I totally forgot about that, that they hadn't actually done bread yet. But yeah, that they didn't do that yet. Oh, I can't wait to talk about Dr. Stone on another episode. Yep. Good, good stuff happening on that show, as always. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be curious to see what that gets replaced by, assuming we still have that announcement that they have been having any troubles with. Oh, boy. <laughs> At this point, they really should have just lied and said it was Dr. Stone. <laughs> I mean, what I'm... I'm sitting there thinking about it, and I'm like, the only two things that pop into my head that would have this this much of a problem would be is Bleach, or maybe, like, they might have gotten Demon Slayer Season 2. I cannot think of anything else that'd be like, what the hell would cause this much of a problem on a mm. license or side out such as blatant stalling? Eh, who could say? But, yeah. I'd watch that. <laughs> season 2 I, is great. I'd watch it. I think, I think Bleach has a chance. And you know, since ZOM 100 is going to be on Hulu and Netflix, and Crunchyroll. Uh, maybe it can also be on Toonami. They're dubbing it. I mean, they got My Hero Academia off of that weird contract, so I mean, you never know what they can pull off. Yeah, well, this is in Viz's court, as is Bleach, so who's to say? <laughs> Viz, remember when you liked Tsunami? <laughs> or at least were able to get good deals and not have, you know, <laughs> weird circumstances related to streaming? Yeah. Yeah. Just let us have Bleach Part 1 for crying out loud. Part 2's coming up. You don't have to worry about it. Just let us have Part 1. Yeah, it's been almost a year. <laughs> I mean, frankly, I think they put, uh, they maybe didn't want to start Bleach until they had more than 13 episodes to show, but I don't know. That's just speculation on my part. I, can see I really going. can't imagine a scenario where they never get to air it but who knows <laughs> things well, things are weird it depends it depends on how much they're trying to charge them i mean it could be a demon slayer situation where they're just being outpriced and they're trying to negotiate well either that or uh, i don't know some kind of uh, exclusivity contract with disney possibly definitely be a, a thing i mean it's not on Crunchyroll, so thank yeah. goodness <laughs> Right. Well, if you have uh, any thoughts on the things that we talked about on this podcast, particularly Food Wars, you can email those to uh, podcast at TsunamiFaithful.com. You can follow us on Facebook.com backslash Tsunami Faithful Podcast or on Twitter still at Tsunami Podcast. You can listen to the podcast on just about everything, including Apple Podcasts, Castbox, Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Overcast, PodBay, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Radio.com, Spotify, Stitcher, and the TuneIn app. And you can find every episode of the podcast to stream online at SoundCloud.com backslash Toonami Faithful Podcast. And you can get the latest news by following at Toonami News on Twitter, still, <laughs> and read the news, views, and reviews on Toonami Faithful.com. Oh, uh, yeah, Twitter continues to be a baffling thing. Uh, we are, uh, we're trying out Instagram threads and... Um, Hive, I think Paul's posting things on Hive now. So we might migrate to other platforms, but for now, we're we're still twittering away. I'm staying on the ship until it's absolutely dead, but that's me. Look, I don't see any reason to abandon it until they limit our DMs. If they limit our DMs, it's over. We're all going to Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that, actually. 
But I already have friends that are like, yeah, I'm done with Twitter. You can hit me up on Discord or text me or whatever. I'm like, oh. Okay, but I probably won't. <laughs> Just being honest. Uh, I can only pay else? attention to so many apps. <laughs> was yeah. there anything else we were going to talk about today? There's no. One thing I want. Okay, because one thing I want to do while I'm here and the off rarity that I don't come back anytime soon. Uh, for those of you who actually bother to read my ratings posts and or just scan the state looking at those posts, you may have noticed an article that I recently made up regarding Showbuzz Daily. Getting to find these numbers is becoming much more of a pain in my ass than I expected. And I just wanted to thank Showbuzz Daily, as I did with Programming Insider, Douglas Perducci, for all the ratings numbers that they have prior. It sucks they're going away, but I can totally understand why, as, yeah, it's really hard and you're not even getting rerun data anymore. I have one more resource in Spoiler TV, and I have no idea how much longer they're going to go for. So I just wanted to say the thank you to that website for all the numbers yes. that they've been out so far. Absolutely. Thank you, Showbuzz Daily, for continuing to post those as long as you did. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure some some are saying, yay, we don't have to worry about these stupid numbers anymore. I mean, you really uh, don't I... have to in general. But, uh, I mean... <laughs> yeah. But, it's <laughs> it sucks when you're not getting at least the basic data, because the problem with me is it's like, yeah, sure, you don't have to worry about it, but then you're taking whatever they say at face value as to why it didn't do well or they wrote it off or shit. It's like, no, bite me. I don't. Show me the data before you even try that crap. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> at least so far, it looks like uh, My Adventures with Superman's doing pretty well. That's, that's good. Good to see that. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too sad to see it go, but it does feel like truly the end of an era but the thing is these uh these companies are really cracking down on that kind of stuff it started is, god i want to say uh, we're we are, fun we're not allowed to have fun anymore with anime yeah. sorry we're yeah, not much. we're not allowed to speculate how well things are doing <laughs> we can't uh, well, have we're... that we can't have any transparency in our industry no 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 <laughs> We want to be able to make our decisions and have no accountability whatsoever. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep, that is that is how they roll. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that now because I wasn't sure when I get invited back. So I was just like, thank you, Showbuzz Daily, for the numbers. I have one resource left, and if that ends up going down, I will let everybody know that, yeah, my whole premise here is pretty much dead in the water. I'm sure we can find some other use for your talents. But, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And you seem like the exact right person to bring it up. So <laughs> thanks for being here yeah. today. Now, I, w I was surprised I was even in, but I was like, oh, okay, sure. And I thought, I'm like, I should probably say that before I before we close, because I just wanted to make sure that for those of you who don't, you know, go to the website that, yeah, it's kind of gotten to the point where, like, the ratings are very, very, like, static. And that was predominantly the reasoning why they shut down. It's, it's just such a mediocre of difference that it's the data is just too low and in too mm -hmm. poor. Yeah, I don't know when we'll have you back on next one, maybe for Dr. Stone, or <laughs> I've actually been uh, contemplating whether or not I want to have you on the next time we talk about One Piece. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I, I have my feelings on what happened with Punk Hazard, but I said that on Twitter for those of you who follow me, so yeah, if you want me on that one, by all means. Mm. <laughs> maybe Maybe we'll get some feedback on whether or not the people want to hear it. If would, not, just follow me on Twitter. It would certainly spice up the conversation a bit. I mean, uh, I, I feel like uh, Laser and V-Lord and I, last time we talked about One Piece, we, you know, we, <laughs> we were fairly positive. I mean, there's certainly things that we didn't like, but yeah. <laughs> could It could be useful to add, add some spice to the conversation. Indeed. That said, uh, yeah, thanks for being here, Colt. Uh, tell, yeah. tell the people where they can find you. Uh, on Twitter at, at Ambient Virus, um, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash lifevirus. I just finished up the mainline Kirby Legacy, so I'll either go into Pikmin or do the offbeat Kirbys uh, and all that sort of stuff and whatever else challenges to come into my head for that. And uh, worst comes to worst, I technically have a Hive account 
and I'm trying to get into Blue Sky, but I'm not going to say those yet, depending on where the Twitter bug goes. Oh, yeah. I'm still waiting for an invite to Blue Sky. <laughs> I'm on the wait list, I think. I don't know. It's confusing. Uh, Kuro, tell them where they can find you. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Happy Kuro Kitty. And please, if you did watch any any other season of Food Wars, your favorite Food Wars recipe. And oh, maybe I can start a thread. I don't know. But I'd love to see them. Maybe we can make a of it. Maybe we can retweet it on the podcast um, Twitter. But just want to hear from people who watched any season of this and what what recipe appealed to you. What would you eat? Just pick one. Don't pick a bunch. Just pick one. Hmm. That could be a fun article, maybe. The yeah, I want to hear what you like the most. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mr. Durrell, tell them where they can find you. At your local bar getting shit face drunk. But um, yeah, you can find me at Ucoming on the score. <laughs> After watching this season, I can't blame you. <laughs> uh. Trust me, there isn't enough alcohol to make that go away. You're right. There isn't. <laughs> and you know how much alcohol I can drink. You have. I, I do know. So. <laughs> I have witnessed. Yes. But like I said, you can find me at Ukami underscore Samurai 7 as always here on Twitter. But I'm barely on the Twitterverse these days. But, you know. Hell, I'm around. Hmm. And you can find me on Twitter for now. At Sketch1984. I don't have any other social medias. I technically have a Facebook, but I never look at that thing. I literally only use Facebook to read Toonami's post because why are they still posting things on Facebook? <laughs> you know, they need to go back to Twitter because I do the exact same thing anymore. It's like, go back to Tumblr for crying out loud. At least you had the, the real postings on Twitter back then. Oh, man. Tumblr is taking some uh, shade out on Twitter lately. <laughs> Welcome to Tumblr. Did you come from Twitter? <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, you do you, Tumblr. <laughs> you know, you know you have been just an embarrassment to everyone when even Tumblr can dunk on you. <laughs> uh, we live in strange times. Truly, truly, truly. This is why we have a megalomaniac in charge of one thing that has... All the power. Yep. Crazy yeah. shit happens. And then we all just make fun of them. Oh, by the way, I'm not like a conspiracy theorist or anyway, but for some mysterious reason, the uh, the the post that Toonami Faithful made way back when, when Toonami made a video about Black Lives Matter, yeah, that, uh, that post got removed from Twitter. No. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Bad wow. optics there. Very bad optics. Oh, that was a note. very that was oh, a very no. emotional post, man. And I mean Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So on that note, I think I think that's a, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a podcast. That's a podcast. Well, <laughs> Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed our Roasting of uh, Food Wars, the fifth plate. And uh, until a next pizza. time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have a pizza. <laughs> With peanut butter and chocolate chips on it. <laughs> God, why? <laughs> Don't like give it. the bill. <laughs> we'll throw a little whipped cream on there, too. <laughs> this I am just literally suggesting things that I put on waffles. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the pizza place I used to work at had a breakfast pizza that was weird as all hell, but whatever. We need to close Ooh, this Ooh, that sounds good. Well, we're moving away from nauseating and into delicious. That's not what I'm hearing. That sounds... <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for watching. Oh, thanks man, for listening, folks. You <laughs> thanks for listening, folks, and tuning in for our nonsense continually as, as, as long as you have or haven't. <laughs> we always okay, appreciate you listening. Another podcast. Yeah, two in a row. And Kuro, too. It would have been CJ two in a row, but you know, conflicting schedules, unfortunately. But I think he'll be back for Dr. Stone. 
maybe <laughs> we shall see but yes thank you very much for listening and with that we're punching out peace Deuces. summer rolls around, I always get an itch for reeling in a big catch. So I packed up my gear and set sail with a creepy horror-themed fishing game called Dredge. As a contracted fisherman, you set out to catch your quota and unravel the mysteries of Marrow Bay. From sunup till sundown, you fish for profit, while dredging up raw materials and gleaming treasures. Use the loot to upgrade your boat, add more cargo space, and install specialized fishing gear. When night falls and the fog rolls in, things start getting really sketchy. The Lovecraftian nightmares of the deep show no mercy, and we'll drag your ship to the inky depths if you're not careful. You'll have to grind pretty hard if you want to catch all the rare sea creatures and see both endings to this dark tale. Even if fishing isn't your thing, Dredge is a fun trip worth taking. We give it an 8 out of 10. Here, there may be monsters. Work in progress so you can see how it's coming along. Here we go.